Peace be with you, and peace from God, the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we enter into the second Sunday in Advent, the theme is about peace. What do you anticipate peace to look like? Long ago, a man sought the perfect picture of peace. Nothing, not finding one that satisfied, he announced a contest to produce the, this masterpiece. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere, and paintings arrived from far and wide. Now, what do you think the, the winner masterpiece should look like? The winner of the contest caught the crowd in surprise. Could this be peace? And what was the painting like? It was about a tomato's waterfall cascaded down a rocky cliff. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explore with lightning, wind, and rain. In the midst of the thundering noises and bitter tune, a spindly free clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. One of its branches reached out in front of the torrential waters as it foolishly seeking to experience its full power. Now, I want you to imagine, as I describe this, I deliberately not showing you that painting, the masterpiece, because we can imagine that in our mind. This, this drawing, that waterfall, and yet there's this branch. And a little bird had built a nest in the elbow of that branch. What does that tell us? In the midst of life storms, can we find perfect peace? What is our peace that we are looking for? Everything goes smoothly. Everything happens in accordance to our plan. What if things go haywire? Content and un undisturbed in her stormy surroundings, this little bird rested her eggs with her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones. She manifested peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. Now, brothers and sisters, and all those who are joining us online in this uh, service, during the second week of Advent, we wait for the peace that comes with Jesus. What is peace? Peace is the well-being experience when we are in harmony with God, with others, and even with ourselves. And yet, as we look around the world, our communities, our families, and even our own homes, we still see the moil, war, divisions, pandemic, economic crisis, and even chaos. And so, when things are going against our own wish, how do we maintain that inner peace in us? For some, our inner peace seems to fade with such troubles around us. And therefore, every year,
year, as we begin our church year, the liturgical year, we begin with Advent. Advent is so important. Every year, as Christians, we, as we begin, we do not just begin with that joyful exclamation. We begin by longing, waiting to experience again the hope, peace, joy, and love from God. Because these are very much needed for us to live in fullness when we are on this earth when we are facing our everyday happenings. Advance, Advance calls us and reminds us to receive over and over again the peace of Jesus and to live in the peace anticipating his second coming. Now, traditionally, when we think of Advance, we immediately call to mind Mary, Joseph, and the angel Gabriel. But if we pay attention to the Gospel of St. Luke, the passage that we have just heard was taken from Gospel chapter 1. But in fact, right from the very first verse in chapter 1 in Luke narration, Zechariah and Elizabeth are the first two people we met in Advent narrative. What do they show us? They show us that life is always imperfect. God seems to remain silent even when we are facing a lot of things that is imperfect in our life. If you know that story, allow me to just move us quickly back from from the very beginning of this chapter to know their background. How did this couple come into singing a song of peace and faith to God? But because there are a lot of things leading up to that. We only want, we only admire people rejoicing, giving thanks to God. We always forget how God has brought them through. From the beginning of this advanced story, we are reminded that life is often unfair. And even devout, obedient people like Zechariah and Elizabeth harbored the tension of unanswered prayers. Because in verse 7 in chapter 1, the Bible tells us that, but they, means this couple, had no child because Elizabeth were barren, and both were advanced in years. They bear the weight of unmet desires. My dear friends, many a times, when our desires are unmet, how do you respond? How do you continue that life? Do you allow that, that turmoil to come into your life and grab, rob us away from that peace that is supposed to have. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth need God's grace of peace that surpasses all understanding to come upon them. Let us also pray that God, whenever I'm faced with such situation, Pray for peace. That's why in our Christian gathering, we always begin by saying, peace of God be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. So that is not just a greeting, but it reminds us that we must always turn to God and ask Him, pray for His peace to come and help us in whatever situation we are in. Zechariah and Elizabeth know something about longing and waiting, even when God seems to be in silence, when their desires were unmet. They must also know something about the difficulty of maintaining faith and hope, and there, the other end, you won't know how long. So that, that maintaining, 
of such a Christian life needs God's grace, needs the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, friends, have you ever prayed and prayed about a struggle in your life and as best you could tell, God was silent. No answer. Nothing happened. I think most of us have experienced that. And at the time, it seemed like we would never hear from God. We need to be like Zechariah and Elizabeth. Never give up on our longing and waiting, even when God seems to be in silence. Until God visits us in his own way, and at his own time. Eventually, he's God. He's God. We say, God, you, got, you take control. All we need is to wait and continue to have hope in him. And when God's time comes, he will always come and surprise us. Like in the case of Zechariah, if you know chapter 1, verse 11, that verse tells us that the angel Gabriel comes to Zechariah and Elizabeth first to extol them with good news, telling them that now you are going to have a baby. Yet they teach us that receiving divine good news can be troubled with all kinds of tensions and questions. Why not? We may have a lot of things going on in our mind when things, the news is too good to believe. And we ask, is it true? How could that be? Even devout persons like this couple, like the priest, old priest Zechariah, experience doubt. Not that he does, does not truly believe, but it is too good to believe. He is surprised and silenced by God because the angel Gabriel says to Zechariah in verse 20, he says, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that worse things take place because you did not believe, in, believe my words which will be fulfilled in their time. What is doubt? Gabriel said, because you did not believe my word. And these are not my word. These are the word of God. I'm just a messenger of the Lord telling you something that you have been praying for, you have longing for, you have waiting for. And now I come and announce this to you, yet there is doubt. What about us? What about us? When we pray, we pray and say, God, 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 listen to my prayer. When God eventually comes, a lot of times we are surprised. And it is an understatement to say that Zechariah and Elizabeth are caught in surprise. Their sh shock dumps them into silence and seclusion, affording them time to dwell with the news. So it is not just a punishment because you don't believe, so you can get dumb. You cannot speak anymore. But God has a higher purpose. Do not see our God as a God that is so impersonal or so judgmental. When Zechariah was put into silence, it is for him to really sit, not talking to others, but listening to his own heartbeat, his own thoughts, and listening to God. My friends, during and during seasons of seeming silence from God on a particular concern of ours are usually unbearable. Yes, we know. We all experience that. They can, among other things, tempt us to believe that God has forgotten about us. 
That's where that thought comes in. God, you don't care. God, God, are you still in control? Doubt comes in. When doubt comes in, peace is no longer there. They may snatch this, the peace of God from us. Instead, what should we do? We should hold on to what we know to be true about God's character, even if we don't currently experience that truth about God, no matter how lengthy that silence. That's why when we need to pray, Lord, we only, not only pray, Lord, give us, keep that peace in me, we also need to pray that, Lord, keep that hope in me, keep that faith in me, that I believe you are God, you are faithful, even when I don't see it now, I can't experience it now. I don't know how long should I wait. Even in our waiting, in silence, we may find our faith strengthened in persisting in the commitments and spiritual disciplines of our faith life, as did Zechariah. Who knows how God will meet us when we least expect it in the very place we are meant to be, as the way he remembers Zechariah. Because when Gabriel, the angel, came, where did he find, where did he find Zechariah? Zechariah was not there sitting somewhere complaining, groaning. Although he has a lot of unmet prayers, but he continued his duty as a priest. He was in the temple. He was doing what he was supposed to do. So my friends, dear brothers and sisters, even when we wait for God, whatever that he has put in our hands, whatever that we need to do, continue to do that. Because we believe that our God con continues to work even in silence. Now you see, as the, the story continues, after Zechariah's vis visit from the angel, he returns home with nothing to say to his wife. But soon, to Elizabeth's astonishment, she becomes pregnant. Elizabeth remains in seclusion for the next nine months. Elizabeth is not just pregnant with a child. She and Zechariah are both pregnant with a seed of trust, belief, and faith. God is building something in us when he wants us to be in silence. God's word is embedding itself and taking root in both of them, and they need time. They need time. A lot of us, we are too impatient. We pray once, we pray twice, we waited for one day, one week, and we become impatient. God, how long, how long, how long? And we give up easily. But the event theme reminds us to be hopeful and to retain that peace from God. Sometimes contemplation and waiting in silence is the most fitting response to God's word or action in our lives. Do you believe that? If you, are, you know yourself that you are not long suffering enough, impatient, this event, this beginning of this church year, pray and ask God to stretch my faith in Him and to help me to grow that patience in waiting for Him. Have you, ex have you ever experienced that inner peace as you are willing to wait for the, the Lord? As God works in our lives now, God is also preparing us for what lies ahead when we quiet ourselves long enough to listen to God and for God. We also join in the divine preparation, believing that our great day of salvation is coming because event reminds us that not just the first coming of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago as a baby in the manger, 
We are praying for his coming into our daily life to help us to remain faithful. And we are also anticipating, believing of his second coming for our final salvation. And when the God's in different parts of our life unfold something, fulfill something, like in the case of Zacharias and Elizabeth, God help him from silence to singing a song of peace and joy. Because when the time is up, the Bible tells us, John the Baptist is born. The season of silence is over. Zechariah, who can once speak again, breaks out in the power of the Holy Spirit from silence to singing, prophesizing and praying in the midst of his small community with a song of peace and faith. My dear brothers and sisters, you need to go through that process in order for your song of faith and peace to be relevant with that real content because you go through it, you experience it. And this song that Zechariah sings is known also as the Benedictos that praises God and sing of freedom. This song is conceived out of Zechariah's nine month silence. There is no better response than to begin by praising God and speaking blessing and assurance into his son's life with a song that birthed long enough in his own life experience. Zechariah sings, it is a song of faith because uh, verses 68 to 69 say he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now I want you to pay attention to the verbs of the Benedictus. Zechariah's prayer are all about God, what God is doing now. He said, God is visiting and ransoming his people. God has raised up a horn of strength in David's lineage. God is turning the promises that were words in the mouth of his prophet into reality that will spell salvation and rescue from all who are enemies of God and God's chosen ones. God has always dwelt mercifully with Israel and remembered the covenant. Now, again, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever we experience God's goodness, when he fulfills something in our life, answered our prayer, when we sing praise to him, when we give thanks to him, may God help us not to be so narrow, just thinking about our own good what you have done for us. But expand it. Look at this song. He, he put himself in the whole work of God and linked himself back to the ancestral God's salvation, God's work from old. He see himself in a community of faith. We really need to ask God to move us away from the individualistic thinking. Me, 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 I, I, I. God, yes, he loves us. He's in interested in our individual life, but it is in the context of a faith community. In a bigger context of God's work throughout history. And now to the child, Zechariah sings, not about his own son, but about another baby, Jesus, the Savior, who would soon be born in verses 72 to 75, says that this Savior, who represents God, word incarnate into the world, to show the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to 
our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. See? When you give thanks, when you when you sing a song of faith, it is all about God. The focus in on, is on God's act. It is not until verse 76 that he addresses his own son and the role he would play in this event we call Christmas. Verses 76 onwards, the in his song, he says, you, means his son John the Baptist, you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Preparing the way, it's not just that, that, that physical way. It is the inner condition of our heart. We need God's grace. God sends someone to come alongside us to, to prepare the way so that the way of peace, the peace of God, is once again being experienced. Little baby John would grow up to be a herald, to prepare people for the coming king to guide their feet into the way of peace and through John's life, work, and eventual death. God served notice that his eternal plan for the redemption of people is finally at hand. Unto us, the child Christ is born. An even greater wonder than the birth of John. Because the story does not end at the birth of John. Points toward our Savior, Christ the child. The salvation of the world is at hand. The Prince of Peace is here. So as you listen to God's word this morning, we pray that, Lord, the peace is here. And let me once again encounter the Prince of Peace. And so what does this passage, th this message of the Advent peace tells us? What is our application for our day? Our waiting, our song of peace and faith rise in our life, sink through our life. When you find yourself in silence, it helps to remember that Although God did not make himself evident even for 400 years prior to the birth of John the Baptist, he was at work the whole time preparing the way. Many of us may be wondering, Lord, this pandemic, so many people contracted this disease and, and the vaccine has not come yet, and so many deaths. Lord, how? We've been praying. I know many of you have been praying start from the beginning. And it doesn't seem that it's coming to an end soon. But do we believe that God is still at work, even in silence? God will redeem the silence in your life. Do you believe that? Whether you have been crying out, for the salvation of someone you love, the restoration of health for yourself or for someone else, for an end to a financial hardship you have been under, or for the stress and mental strain of life to ease up, God is still working, even when you cannot see evidence of it. Take that in. God is still working. God remains true to God's word to redeem us from ourselves and to provide a way to reconcile ourselves fully to God to be at peace with him. We need the peace. 
to be at peace with him first. Then we are able to be at peace with ourselves and we extend this peace to others. Therefore, I urge you to receive Jesus into your life. Even you are already a Christians, but this season is God's invitation once again for us to receive Jesus into our life over again. Lord, come. Come, Lord Jesus. This is a prayer. This is a prayer in the whole Advent season. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Come, Lord Jesus. And if you are yet to know Jesus, I invite you during this season to open yourself, to accept him, his peace, his work in your life so that you can experience him as your personal Lord and Savior. You accept him because this life that we are in, we cannot handle it with our own strength. God is here sending his son Jesus Christ, to help us, to hold our hands, to lead us through. Just give him your hand. Allow him to lead you into the way of peace. This Christmas, in spite of the silence in our waiting, let us sing a song of peace and faith. A song like Zacharias. How would your song like? Think about that. Pray about that. Pray to God first and then share your song of peace and faith to others. Let us offer a word of assurance and extend the peace of Christ to others. Let us invite our relatives, our neighbors, or our friends to worship with you at your home next Sunday. Because next Sunday is the third Sunday in event where we celebrate the joy of event. Share this joy, joy to the world. When we reclaim that peace, church, let us open our home, invite a few friends to worship with you at 8.45 in our words, normal service, but after that, to share God's love and joy with them. Are you willing to do so? God wants to work with, it, with us, in us, and through us. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Emmanuel. Come into our life. Come into this world. Come and grant us your peace. We await your coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.